If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video, reread the question, maybe attempt to solve it on your own before listening on. And one of the key concepts that's illustrated in this question is how resistance changes with temperature. We're going to be traveling from Death Valley where the temperature is a relatively balmy 58 degrees Celsius onto Antarctica where the temperature drops to negative 88 degrees Celsius. And when the temperature decreases, the resistance changes. And in particular, the resistance of a wire will actually decrease as the temperature decreases. With less resistance, we would expect that the current would actually increase. So that's kind of a prediction we could make in this question, is that the current will indeed increase from one amp in Death Valley to some other value that we will solve for in this question. Now we have written down the equation that gives us the resistance as a function of temperature. We're gonna be referring to that shortly. But we've also learned in this chapter Ohm's law, which tells us that the potential difference applied across the wire is going to equal the current that is traveling through the wire multiplied by the resistance of that wire. Now we have two different scenarios here. We have the scenario in which the current is flowing through a warm wire in Death Valley. So we might say that that current is going to have a subscript D and then the resistance in Death Valley would have a subscript D. We're not gonna put a subscript D on the potential difference because the question notes that Bill applies the same voltage to the same wire. So the delta V is going to remain a constant in this question. There would be no need for us to change the subscript label there. On to Antarctica, we can write down Ohm's law once again, but this time we will use subscripts of A to represent the values in Antarctica. Now, one trick that perhaps we could do for, with these two equations is to divide them. So if we divide the equation one by the other, we're going to have delta V over delta V, which of course is equal to one. And then over on this side, we have this sort of ratio here of current times resistance in Death Valley over the corresponding values in Antarctica. Now the question is asking us to solve for the current in Antarctica. So we want to rearrange this equation and solve it for I subscript A. So to do that, we might put this one over another one and then cross multiply. So we're going to multiply this way and that's going to give us I A R A. And then when we multiply the other way, we would have I D R D. And then one more step to solve for I sub A is to just divide both sides by R sub A. So here is our equation here. We're gonna put the R sub D over the R sub A in this manner, just for a little bit of clarity. And what we're gonna next do for these resistances is go back up to the resistance equation that is circled on your screen, and we're going to be plugging in the particular expression. So we can see that the resistance is going to equal this expression right here. We're gonna go ahead and plug that in for the resistance in Death Valley and that in Antarctica. So there we have the expression. Notice we attach a little subscript to the temperature of D for Death Valley and a subscript A for Antarctica. And now we wanna talk about a little more of the structure of this equation. And that includes this alpha. This is a temperature coefficient of resistivity. We would need to look that up for copper. Here is a table from the textbook that would allow us to do that. We look up copper, we can see that its temperature coefficient of resistivity is this 3.9 times 10 to the minus three and that unit is inverse degrees Celsius. We also have this T sub zero in both terms that I just circled right there. That is a reference temperature. If you go back to that table, all of these temperature coefficients have been collected at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. So that's going to be the value of your T sub zero for both the numerator and the denominator. And then what we're gonna do is plug in the temperature at Death Valley and then the temperature at Antarctica. Those were given in the question. And then finally, this R naught value was not given in the question, but it won't matter because when we divide, the r naughts become a one. They effectively cancel out. And then finally, the current in Death Valley was given to us as one amp. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. And when you plug that all into a calculator, you should end up with a resistance in an, excuse me, a current in Antarctica of approximately 1.98 amps. And lo and behold, notice that we have almost doubled the current. It went from one amp to basically two amps. And that is again, because in Antarctica, the temperature has gone down. That drop in temperature lowers the resistance of the copper wire, and that allows more current to travel through it.